Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Sharon Aguilar and I'm glad you've joined me today. So I started doing these monthly sewing roundups last month and plan to do them all year. And it's just a time where I come on my channel and I show you everything that I have made that month. And I talk about the patterns, talk about what I've loved about them, what I didn't like, what fabric I used. Um, and I'm glad to, I'm glad to get started on it again this month. So February was a great sewing month for me. Um, looking back on it, I felt like I was all over the place into as to which season to even sew for. Um, I live in Texas to where our winters are rather mild. So by the time February run, rolls around, we've had several 60, 70 degree days and spring is on my mind. So I kind of started the month out thinking how I was so excited to sew for spring weather. And then we got um, an amazing snowstorm, and I say amazing in a good way and a bad way. Um, it wasn't necessarily all happy places. Texas did not know how to handle it. Um, but anyways, it made me go back to sewing more cold weather stuff because I realized maybe we are not done sewing for winter. So I kind of have pieces for both in today's video. I have pieces that I've made for spring as well as pieces that I finished up and made for winter. Let's go ahead and get started um, in the projects. The first one that I want to talk to you about is the wardrobe by me um, freedom dress. So this was um, one that I did as part of a pattern test and I used some fabric that I received from Minerva and um, I love this dress. So let's just go ahead and get the, that out of the way. Um, I do not sew dresses that often. I don't even have that many dresses because you're more likely to find me in athletic wear. I love to um, so active wear. So dresses just feel so far out of what is my like normal everyday routine. But every once in a while, I'll, I'll, I get an itch and I want to sew a dress with, with everything in it. I want ruffles. I want all the girly things that a dress can offer. And this one did not disappoint. I, I love that um, it had all these professional finishings. It had bust darts. It has the, the buttons with the placket and everything that up really, really nicely for me. Um, as far as sizing, the pattern has sizes 0 through 24, which covers full bust measuring from 30 and a half inches to 48 and a half inches. And I measured right in between the 2 and the 4. And I kind of went back and forth as to whether I should size down or size up. And I went ahead and just went with the size 4. So I went with the bigger size. And I'm glad I did because I like the extra ease that it gave me in the pattern. So the pattern is drafted for 5 foot 8 and I am 5 foot 2. So... Obviously, I knew I was going to have to make some adjustments for my height, um, which is typical for me. Well, um, I have an 8-inch side waist, so I rarely alter tops for me. I seem to be what designers typically draft for in my um, bust region and my top. Um, so is what I did was I only removed the length from the skirt. I left the bodice alone. I made it first, checked it out. It hit exactly where it needed to. So I only made adjustments to my skirt. And is what I did was I, um, well, first off, I'll tell you there's two options to the skirt. You can do a two tier or a three tier. And the two tier, the first tier is just longer and then it has um, a bottom one. While the three tier I liked better because they seemed more evenly distributed. So I made the three tier and I took an inch and a half off of each tier um, so that it remained even. And I, I love the length that it ended up. I think it's a really flattering flatteringly. There's still a little bit of like showing that it's nice and long and flowy um, and very, very pretty and feminine. Okay. So as far as the sleeve options, you can do a roll tab sleeve. It's kind of like a three quarter length. Um, you can do a bishop sleeve that has elastic in it, or you can just leave your bishop sleeve hemmed and don't put elastic in the bottom for it to, um, to cuff up. So on the pattern, it recommends for the sleeves to use one inch elastic in the band. And I must have done something wrong because the way that I folded my casing under for the sleeves, I ended up with only like a half inch casing. So I used three eighths inch elastic, which I really like. I think it um, it turned out really, really pretty having the smaller cuff there. Um, so just be aware that the pattern is probably different than the way mine look. Um, I don't know how I missed that. Um, anyways, the color, the color has where you can just do a band and there's no tie left over. Um, if you want to have more of like an open chest area there, or there is the option to tie. Um, it's like a long tie and you can tie that. Okay, fabric. I used this art gallery fabric. It's a rayon ch chali from um, Minerva and I got three meters of it and I used every bit of those three meters. I had to really pay attention to how I put my pieces 
um, to make sure I even had enough. So be mindful of that. This dress is a fabric hog with those with that full skirt the way that it is. Um, it's it really does take the fabric recommendation in there, and you have to be careful when you're cutting. Um, the fabric I really like this one. It's it's such a soft and pretty, and it wasn't hard to work with. I mean, for Rayon Chali, I mean it's not like. I don't know, it shifts, so you really have to pay attention. You have to make sure you're cutting on grain um, whenever you're sewing with this fabric, And but it has such a beautiful result. So I always feel like it's worth the time that it takes, but it does mean that it takes longer to sew with it. Okay, so that is all for my wardrobe of me freedom dress. Don't you love this fabric? The green is just, it's just gorgeous. It's got such feminine touches and the flowy skirt is just everything. Okay, so the next one that I want to talk to you about uh, is I sewed some green style. I sewed the green style Brazzies as well as the green style Bianca. The Bianca was a new release this month and I made two of them and two is not enough. I want to go back and make a dozen more because I have worn the ones I've made so much um, and I love all the touches in this pattern. So let's get into the pattern details for the Bianca and then I'll tell you about the Brazzies that I made. So the green style Bianca, it is a oversized crop titty. It doesn't feel sloppy, but it has ease that it's super, super comfortable. Um, it has two links. It, there's one link that sits at the crop and then there's another one that sits at your high hip and you can kind of make a you can kind of change the way those links hit based on your finishing that you do on the bottom. So you can choose to um, do like a drawstring band where you can cinch it up. You can do a, just a regular band that's taller or you can just hem it. So your length is going to be different based on just what which of those that you pick. The shortest would be if you just hemmed it because then you're removing um, length. Um, and then the next one would be the drawstring band and then the longest would be the full band because it's taller, okay? So there's also three pocket options. I think this is one of the things that kind of set this pattern apart was it has these really pretty cool zipper pockets as well as a scoop pocket and they come out of the side seams so they feel they're not pockets that you're gonna like hang out like with your hands in because they're like, here's the side seam. So this one doesn't have that style, but you're gonna be like back here. So you're gonna get a good stretch um, in your chest if you fit your hands in those pockets, but they're really nice for holding stuff and, or just to have, especially the zippered pocket. Um, this one is the, um, you have the kangaroo pocket and I really love that option. It's it's the, if you really like pockets to put your hands in, you're gonna wanna do the kangaroo pocket because it naturally sits where your hands would sit. So um, I like that one, especially um, on the cropped versions, you're not really gonna be able to do the zipper pockets if you do the highest crop because they're gonna sit too close to your chest. Um, the zipper pockets is really for the high hip length. Okay, so the fabric that I used on mine on this berry color is a French Terry from Made Whimsy. And I got, when I ordered it, I got several. I also got some sweat, sweatshirting fabric from her. And I really like this cotton fabric that has the addition of the spandex to help your French Terry to have nice recovery. Um, I got two and a half yards of it so that I could go ahead and just bury my whole body. And that's how the Brazzies came out, out this month is, um, I just, I love this sweatsuit. I just felt so comfortable and yet I felt really fun and pretty. I'm wearing so much color. Um, in this. So I made comfy brazzies, the brazzies. Um, I don't know how much I should talk about them because I feel like I'm obsessed with brazzies. And like when you re recognize your obsession with a pattern, you're like, do I talk about it too much? But I've done a sew along for them. Every few months I write a blog post about them saying I made another pair. I think I have over 20 pairs of brazzies well over. I have some for working out. I have some for lounging around. I have some for wearing every day and I have some that I sleep in. So it's like my all-purpose pattern. Um, these are super comfortable. If you want to sew a pair with me, go back and on my channel and find the sew along for them. Um, and you can sew, sew a pair with me. Um, I So I made two Brazzy joggers. I made the ones that go with my berry suit as well as I made this brown pair. Um, or well, it's not brown, it's like a hazel color. And um, these, these this pair is so incredibly comfortable. I tried out a new French terry fabric from the Fabric Snob. So the Fabric Snob is in Canada and I never ordered from them before, um, but I saw they had such a vast selection of French Terry. And I thought, well, they're in Canada, they're used to cold weather, so they're gonna have some really nice stuff. So I ordered, it took a month to get to me, but it was well worth the wait because I loved all the fabric that I got. I definitely um, will be ordering from them again. 
and their French terry is different. Like the made Whimsy French terry is got more of like a stiffer hand. And I don't mean that like in a bad way. It's just more stable looking. And the stretch it has has a tight recovery. Um, it also like doesn't, it wears really wear. Like I've washed this hoodie several times and it doesn't pill and it doesn't really fade. So it's a really great quality. While the French cherry that I got from the fabric snob, I noticed it has got a lot more stretch to it. Um, let me grab you a scrap just to see them next to you. Okay, so this is the French cherry that I got from Fabric Snob. And you can tell, like, it already kind of wants to pill, it, but it's a softer hand. Um, so it's super, super comfortable. It's thicker of a French cherry, and it's more brushed feeling on the inside um, than the made, made Whimsy is. It's not a sweatshirt, though. The loops are not cut. The difference between a French cherry and a sweatshirting fabric is just that the loops are cut and it's more brushed um, on the back. So, um, you can tell it's got so much, like the stretch is amazing on this in both directions. Um, but it has more, um, it's just a softer hand to it. So the, the French Terry from Made Whimsy, it just doesn't, I mean, it has the stretch, but it's not near the amount. Um, so they're just two different ones. I like both of them. I ordered several colors from both companies and we'll be using both of them. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to talk to you about um, on the Bianca is I made another one in French Terry. This one is like a poly spandex French Terry from um, Nip Pop. It was like $5 a yard and I thought it would make a great test garment and I ended up loving it. That's beautiful floral. So this one I made in between the cropped and the high hip line. There's two inches difference between them and I just cut like one inch between and then that was the length and then I hemmed it. Um, my favorite thing about the Bianca is really kind of silly, but it's that the cuffs are like wide. They don't sit on my wrist really tight like this. They're wide enough that I can pull them over my hands and all day long go around with, <laughs> with my, with my um, cuff over my wrist. And I, I really, I really love that. Um, I don't like it whenever I have layering garments that have really tight cuffs because then it means it really limits me on the garments that I can layer them over. Um, because if the garment has a cuff on it as well, then if I had a tight cuff, it's hard to kind of get it in there. Anyways, I like the looser cuffs. Okay, that is everything for the Bianca and the Brazza Joggers. If you have any questions about them, let me know. Okay, so my next sew this month was also from Green Style, and it was the Sundial Leggings. This, this is a new, quick, easy pattern that just released, and I will be doing a sew along for it. The sew along starts on March 1st, and I hope you join me. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you're a beginner and you're not used to sewing leggings, this is when you really need to join because I'm going to go over a lot of things that I think will really help you um, about getting started sewing with really stretchy fabric, the stitches that you need to learn. If you don't have a cover stitch, how you can still hem and get a great looking pair of leggings. Um, I'll go through each step of the way so you can just follow right along and don't feel like you're trying to figure out um, what to do in each step. So. I hope you join me. It's going to be a lot of fun. It'll last all week and you'll have a pair of leggings when it's done. Um, the sundial leggings pattern, it includes sizes B through M, which measures um, hips measuring 32 to 62 inches is what is included in that pattern. It has three waistband options. You can do the crossover. So you have a fun little crossover V. You can do a solid waistband or you can pick an option where you combine all three. Um, not all three, where you combine all two. So you'll have the, the comfort of, and the security keeping your leggings up of the solid waistband. And then you'll have the fun detail of the crossover in the front. Um, it has no side seams. So they're super quick in that all you're sewing is a rise and an inseam and then putting a waistband on and hemming. So um, it makes them super quick. There is a gusset option. I'll be demonstrating how to do that on the videos. So on the sundial leggings, I made lots of pair of these to get, to get ready for the salon because I wanted to make sure that I filmed every option I could think of. So anyways, um, I sewed them in lots of different fabrics. One of them is my favorite. It's Athletic Brush Poly. It is like one of my favorite fabrics to sew for athletics. So that one I sewed this crossover pair with. The next fabric is an Athletic Ribnet. This is a new fabric that Greenstyle got in and I really like it. It's a subplex, so it has like a warm feeling. And on the back of it, it has that subplex um, feel, but the front, it has these ribs that are so, 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 so good. Um, like the entire time I'm wearing these leggings, I am touching my legs because they just feel so cool. So this fabric, you're gonna wanna cut it off like,
cross grain because the ribs run um, along the grain and that's where it's the stretchier it's the stretchiest is pulling those ribs if you cut them out with your ribs running um, sideways on your legs then they're gonna be super tight there's not as much stretch that way um, I learned that lesson whenever I cut out my waistband I thought oh it's gonna be a great idea to put my crossover band with the ribs running um, horizontally across my body and then I put my pants on and thought I'm never gonna be able to take these off there tonight <laughs> like I think that you would love that option if you love really, really tight waistbands. Otherwise, if you don't like really tight pants, then you should keep your ribs running vertical and they will fit like normal leggings would. Okay, so the last fabric that I use that I want to show you on the sundial leggings is this glossy knit that I got from um, the style Magnolia. So now this, this is like slinky. It's a nylon spandex, but it, it doesn't feel like swim. Um, it's strange my immediate first thought when I felt it was that it felt like velvet and which it doesn't feel like velvet at all but I meant that because it has like a nap running on the fabric so you feel it one way and it's like incredibly smooth and soft but then if you take your hand and smooth it the reverse way it like resists you and that's the reason I thought of velvet was the way that the nap runs so um it doesn't have a pile on it though it's just smooth and slick and this is a perfect fabric I felt like for the summer like it is it's very breathable. Um, it's not that squat proof. Whenever I squatted in it with panties, I was wearing turquoise panties and you can kind of see them through it, but it doesn't show the shape of my panties. So it's nice in that. I would just say wear nude colored panties and they're not going to show through or whatever your nude is. So if you can find a nude that matches your skin tone, then it's fine. And it's fine if you know, you're, you're not going to see the seams of your leggings. You're just might see the color show through. Um, I, I really love how it felt. I was amazed at the drape. A lot of athletic fabrics that I tried, they're stiff. You know, you want to use, use them for something with negative ease so that they're sitting tight against your body and holding you in. While this one, it did hold me in, but it also, I was just amazed at how it flowed. So I also made a top out of it. I had just like the tiniest amount to get like this crop top out of. Um, on this one, I used the green style Scarlet Swing. I did not have enough for like a full swing dress. So I just cut it at a crop length, which was what I had. Um, so I made that adjustment to the pattern. The pattern only includes a tunic and a dress length. So um, I really like this. I actually want to make this version, uh, my my modification to the Scarlet Swing again. I think it's a nice little flowy top with a lot of good movement to it. Okay, so next I got to sew a lot of art gallery knits. Like I was, I was thinking about spring and I wanted to, I pulled out some cotton lycra and I really wanted to go through and get some tops for me as well as my daughters. So um, I made a top for my oldest, my middle daughter and my youngest, as well as for myself out of some art gallery cotton lycra knits. So the first one that I'm going to show you is for my oldest daughter and I made the Ellie and Mac oversized tee. And this is, it's actually really similar to the Bianca in that it's, you know, oversized, but I found this one just has different options, different finishings, and, and it fits, I mean, it fits a little different. It's just the same concept. Um, on this one, you can choose between a crew neck, a boat neck, or a hood. It has multiple lengths um, of the body, like there's a short crop, there's a long crop, there's a a shirt length, there's a tunic length, like there's multiple links that you can choose from, as well as you can finish it with a, um, a hem or a band. I didn't really like the band option on this pattern, and the reason was I felt like when it cinches it, there's like just so much puckering on the top of that, and um, when I add a band to a crop like that, I just don't like that. Um, I don't mind the cinch if there's like a drawstring cinching it. For some reason, that doesn't bother me. Um, it's just when there's the band and it stays like that. I didn't, so I didn't do that option. I just did the hemmed one. And my daughter fits in the same size as me. So um, I actually just printed the pattern out for me and then made one for her and myself. I made mine out of this like pop art print that uh, my friend gave me. Um, and then she tried it on and was like, mom, I want one too. So then I, I used this art gallery knit that I got from Minerva for hers. And she says it's exactly like her favorite top that she got at the store. And she'd love for me to make her a dozen more. Um, so that one, it has a very, very big size range. It fits full bust measuring from 29 to 67 inches. So I think it goes up to 7XL. And um, I did, on hers, I did the short sleeves. There's also a long, a long sleeve length on that one. And I did the longer crop length because um, as much as she'd love it if I did the shorter crop length, I'm not ready for that on her. So, okay, so that's all for that one. I used the same fabric that I had left over after I finished her top 
on my middle daughter. She wanted just like a long sleeve t-shirt and she picked the Sofiona Designs Clover. It's a hoodie pattern and I've made her the hoodie version and she wears it all the time. And it's one of her favorite things that she's worn this year. So she said, I just want a t-shirt version of this. So I did one with the neck band and I didn't do any of the color blocking. She didn't want any of the fun options. And um, I did just the regular long sleeves. Now this one has a tight cuff and the cuff is gathered. So there's a lot of fullness at the bottom, like a bishop sleeve. And I think it's super cute on her. I think she's adorable in it. And um, okay, so the next one that we'll talk about is for my youngest daughter, this cute strawberries fabric. I, I use the Stripe Swallow Designs. It's called Falling For You. And this pattern comes in kids and it comes in women's. And um, the reason I was drawn to this is I love the pocket style with those cute little ruffles on the bodice. I think they're just so adorable on her. This one has a hood option as well as the neck band and I just chose the neck band as well as it has short or long sleeves. So um, I made the long sleeves. I think I'm, I'm gonna make this one for her again when as soon as our weather is just a little bit warmer and I'll do it with some short sleeves because I she loves the pocket. Um, she just keeps finding stuff to put in them. I always see her walking around with her hands in them. And I've made her um, since then a different pattern, a different shirt. And it didn't come with a pocket. And she looked at me and was like, mom, where's my pocket? <laughs> like now she expects all of her shirts to have fun pockets. Um, so it's super cute. I made her the 2T length. She is interesting to sew for because she is more slim than most patterns fit. So it's even harder to find. Like if I buy her store-bought shirts, if I get the right length on her, then they're just really kind of big on her. Um, but so sewing for her is great because I can just adjust. And um, on that one, I followed the pattern directions on how to cut out pieces. It shows how to cut um, the 2T length with the three, I'm uh, sorry, the 3T length with the 2T width. So that's what I did for her. And I was glad that they illustrated in the pattern how to adjust that. Okay, so I had some strawberry fabric left over and I thought it was super cute. So I made myself another green style. Um, on this one, it's the Cambria. I've made this top five or six times. I've made it a lot of times. I really like it. Um, I especially love the short sleeves with the, the um, pleats at the top. I think it's super cute and I thought it was perfect in this fabric. So this pattern has four sleeve options. There is a bishop style where only the only the bottom is full and gathered and the top is just like a regular um, a regular seam. And then there's also the option where you can do a full fullness on top or you can do pleats or gathers as well as the fullness on the bottom. There's um, different lengths, there's short sleeves, there's three quarter, and then there's a long with a regular cuff or a long with a tall cuff. And um, there's two different fits. Like you can do like, it says it's a slimmer version and then an easy fit. Well, I did the slim version and it still has lots of ease on me. So I wouldn't, I don't know. I wouldn't really call it slim. I think it's just like slimmer than um, the other fit. Um, there's also three different lengths. I don't remember what they were labeled. I did the middle one and that um, was mine. Um, on the neck band, you can do like a mock neck. You can do a high crew, a low crew, or like a wide scoop. Um, so I did the low crew on mine. I think it's like perfect that it's not like on my neck choking me, but also kind of modest and not, I can wear whatever bra I want and not have to worry about it showing. Okay. So that is everything on, um, the art gallery knits. The, oh, this fabric came from Minerva and I also wrote posts about it on their site. So I'll link those in the description. So the next one that I want to show you, um, is actually, uh, something I started back in like October or November and I got so far in the project and for some reason I think we were just having really mild weather so I just thought why am I sewing this because I'm never gonna wear it um and then when our cold spell hit in February where it was like frozen in Texas and my we had rolling power outages in my house I was I, I found it um in a bin in my sewing room and I thought this just needs a hem <laughs> So I finished it and then wore it for like several days straight and I'm so glad I finished it because I was literally wearing a quilt. Um, so when it was cold in my house, I was fine. And um, this one is a quilted jacket that I used using um, the Itch to Stitch Taxing is I think how you pronounce it. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Um, it's not a word I've ever used before. Um, it's, it, it's like, it's a regular jacket pro, um, pattern and it's drafted for just like wovens or even like a quilted knit. So this wasn't necessarily a pattern that had how to quilt it or was intended to be a quilted jacket, but I just couldn't not see it as that. Like when I saw it, I just thought the way that the, the sash was and the way it closed, I just thought that would make a really great quilt jacket. So I got some flannel that I had in my stash and I quilted it. Um, so I got, I got the flannel and then I got um, quilt batting and I glued them together with spray glue. 
And then I put the um, quilting cotton on the wrong, the other side and made like my quilt sandwich, like I was making a quilt. And then I cut my pieces out of that. Um, and then after my pieces were cut out, I um, just sewed straight lines following the grain line. So I put them one inch apart. And um, I love how it turned out. And I started off, whenever I was initially making it, I think one of the things that made it take so long is I started off like binding the seams and making them look really pretty on the inside. And that took forever. And I think I would have been a lot faster if I wouldn't have done that, but it sure looks pretty. Um, the way that this pattern is designed is it finishes with like a sash that ties. And I didn't really like the sash, so I changed that and I did ties. Um, so for the ties, I just cut a strip of fabric that was an inch and a half long, sewed it right sides together and turned it back out. And then I just kind of um, eyeballed it on my body to where it would look good um, and then cut off the excess. And I really like how that worked out. Um, the other adjustment that I made to the pattern is that um, it's a three quarter length sleeve and I really didn't want a jacket that was three quarter length sleeve. So um, I normally have to remove from sleeves and patterns. So I just didn't remove any length on this one and then I added a cuff at the bottom and it ended up at a great length on me. Um, the one thing on this pattern is that it's part of the So Beautiful book. So you can't just buy it individually. Um, so the So Beautiful book is sold on Amazon and it includes like eight different patterns. And this is my third one in this book. So I think it's worth it. It's like $12 for the ebook and it comes with PDF patterns. Um, if you buy the physical book, you don't get the PDF patterns um, and it's a little more expensive. Um, on this one, she, she released this book before she um, updated her size chart. So it is her old size chart and it sizes zeros, zero, zero to 20, which um, covers full best measuring 31 and one eighth inches to 46 inches. So it's a, a smaller size range. Um, than her current one. Um, on this one, I sewed the size based on my bust. My hips are actually like three eighths of an inch larger. Um, so I didn't adjust that and it hits kind of at my high hip. So I don't think it, it made that much of a difference. Um, the, another adjustment I needed to make on the pattern, once I tried it on, I felt like my sleeves were kind of constricting whenever I bent my arms. And it's just because the pattern wasn't designed for like that thick of fabric. So I just went back and I took a quarter inch seam allowance through my sleeves and then I took the regular half inch seam allowance through the body and that was fine. And that gave me plenty of ease in my sleeves after I did that. Um, and I'm really happy with my quilt jacket and underneath it, I made a really quick Merlot field tee. So the Merlot, Merlot field tee is by Soho 7 and I really like this pattern company. Um, every time I sew one of their patterns, it ends up being one that I just wear a lot. Um, it's, I've just noticed that like I've made their free range slacks. Um, I've also made their to both versions of their toaster sweaters and they're some of my most worn um, handmade garments. So I try and sew more of those because I always end up that I, I, I guess the style always just fits me really well. Um, this one was really quick to put together. I just used some jersey that I, um, I think I got it in a local D stash for really cheap and I love the colors. So I thought they went really well together on this. Um, this one, it says that it's drafted for 25% stretch fabric, but I I don't know about that. I feel like it it needs those drapier, stretchier fabrics for the sleeves. The sleeves are a close fit. Um, the body has a lot of ease, so um, you don't really need the great amount of stretch for your body. And you also don't want to use a fabric with a lot of structure or it's going to make you look bigger. It goes from zero, zero to 20 as well on the size range, which is bust measuring 31 to 47 inches. Um, it doesn't have a lot of options. There's two necklines, a boat or a crew. Um, and then there's three sleeve links. You can do the long three quarter or short. Um, the color blocking is in all views of the pattern. Um, I, I think it's the thing that I really like the most about it. It's an easy sew and, it, and it's a great fit. Um, the only adjustment I needed to make was that I removed one inch from my sleeves, which is typical for me. Um, and that's it for my quilted jacket and my Merlot field tee. And... Okay, so the last project that we are gonna talk about today, um, I made some named clothing pattern company, the Nini Collats, and I made those in tinsel twill, as well as a green styled center fill raglan. So this is just a quick little outfit that I put together, hoping spring weather would come because <laughs> it didn't, it did not make it come, um, but I will be ready when it happens. So the Nini Collats I've sewn before, I, I did like a more structured fabric the first time and this time I wanted something with drape. Um, I love the tinsel twill. It, it is a fabric made from eucalyptus leaves and it's very breathable, like I feel like you can wear this as like pants or dresses in the summer in Texas and I'm not like really hot. Like it, it breathes really well. It's, it's drapes well. It's an easy fabric to sew with. 
Anyways, okay, so the Nini Colots, the pattern is drafted for almost any fabric that you want to sew it in. It, in the pattern, it says you can use knits, you can use wovens. It's got a lot of ease, and it's just meant to sit like a skirt on you. Um, on mine, I was between sizes, so I actually went down to the lower size and still used woven, and they had plenty of ease. Um, the size range is 0 to 24, which is hips ranging from 33 and an eighth inch to 55 and 7 eighths inch. So it has a lot of volume. Um, the pockets are in the inseam on the side. They sit pretty nice. I mean, sometimes people don't really like inseam pockets. They're not, they're easy and quick to do. They can be not flattering in the wrong fabrics. Um, they, these, I'm 5'2", and I normally have to adjust patterns in my legs. My shortness is all in my legs. So most pants patterns, if you, if they're drafted for a typical regular person, I remove at least three inches from on these, I added an inch because I really didn't want them sitting like at the widest part of my calf. I just thought that would be so not flattering. Um, so I added an inch and they sit more like crop pants on me. I could probably add a few more inches and just have some wide leg pants um, and they would work great for that. Um, they're great just like lounge pants. I think, you know, the pandemic is still going strong. I'm home a lot and I love to just wear comfortable pants. The elastic waist is great. Um, and when I wear pants with this much volume, I like to have a fitted top on the top. And so on this one, I made just a really quick raglan. This is the green style center field raglan. And, um, it's just one of my closet staples when I want just an easy fitted t-shirt. I actually go up a size in this pattern. Um, it fits me even tighter in my regular size. So that's something to be mindful of. Anyways, so that's everything for this month. I will link each pattern that I talked about in the description below, um, as well as any blog posts that I've written on them. If you have any questions about any of what I think about any of these garments, um, what I love the most, what I don't, you know, feel free to contact me. Um, I think I had a great month sewing. I, I look forward to what I'm going to make in March and starting a new month. I think this month I'm going to be more focused. I want to sew um, brighter colors, <laughs> as if I don't already. I want to sew more light fabrics. I noticed that I tend to like gravitate towards dark black fabrics and um, I need to sew more with like yellows and springish colors. I'm ready for spring to get here. Um, anyways, I hope y'all all have a great day. Thank you for watching my video. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe.